Russ? Yeah, um, just uh, tremendously excited to uh, to lead our defense moving forward and, and uh, work alongside Mark Hagan and Casey Teagarden and Brandon Shelby, um, guys that uh, I've gotten to know really over the last couple of years. Um, uh, Tom brought uh, his staff down to South Alabama and got to meet those guys, um, spend time with them, talk ball with them. Now I've gotten to know their families and, and uh, just a tremendous group of guys that I'm excited to uh, get to work with. And I think our players are really hungry. Um, I think, uh, you know, we make no bones about it. Uh, the end of the season um, left, left a bad taste in our mouths. And uh, I think that we all know that we're capable of a whole lot more. Uh, and I think we're excited to uh, begin the work in that. So uh, really uh, an exciting challenge uh, for us and the opportunity to work with uh, Tom, in this role um, now as the defensive coordinator and with him as a head coach, is really, uh, you know, I, I, I get emotional somewhat thinking about it just because it's been something that, uh, that I've dreamed of for a very long time um, to work uh, for a guy that I believe in, that I trust, that I know, um, and, uh, and to be able to do that hand in hand and accomplish the things that he has uh, set for our team on a macro level uh, to be able to put my full weight and influence uh, behind our defense is uh, just really a dream come true for me. No, no, I'll, I'll still handle uh, our linebacking core. Um, you know, I, I'm a uh, I'm a fundamental guy, um, so at, at every position uh, we will uh, speak at, at, at the very first thing that we do as we uh, install our defense, I say just kind of rehash our defense at the this time of the year when we kind of get off the road recruiting in February. We'll spend time and we'll go through every single position group and talk through from the defensive line to the back end, what is it that we're looking for at every single position, uh, every single technique that's played on the field, uh, and then It'll be the responsibility to each of those coaches once we get on the same page about what we're doing. Uh, they got to go execute it and they got to go get their guys to do it. And ultimately, uh, that falls on my shoulders, the responsibility of our defensive execution. And, and I'll hold those guys accountable. Um, but, uh, but I kind of run the room where we all hold our, ourselves accountable once we, once we establish what we want to get done um, from that standpoint. I think it's something that we're uh, all on the same page of. No, you know, that's a really good question. I think, um, I mean, it's it's hard to miss uh, the energy and tempo that he brings into any task he's trying to accomplish. And so uh, without question, I remember uh, when Tom and my dad uh, were at uh, Arkansas State together, uh, which was their first stop, just a person that has such a passion for this game uh, and such a passion for the people that he's around. You know, I think he's a, a guy that lights up a room just with the energy intensity that he brings every day. And so uh, for us to have that relationship where we've gotten to work alongside each other in different roles, both as um, assistants together, or I say him an assistant, myself a graduate assistant, and then, uh, and then you know, talking as coordinators together uh, at different places, and then now working as an assistant for him, as him being uh, the defensive coordinator, and now my role as defensive coordinator and all that, it's just, uh, you know, we've we've built relationships on so many different facets and level that I think both of us could uh, could you know basically go through a situation together and and anticipate and know what the other guy's going to do you know and that's a that's a really nice relationship to be able to have when you're looking at uh, a stress environment uh, that that we deal in on a day to day basis. Right. Well, I, I'm a I'm a person that believes that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna take the reins and uh, and and run with it and and go uh, as as hard as I can at every position uh, that we need to. And then when Tom, you know, Tom makes the ultimate decision uh, in terms of our personnel. And so I'm gonna uh, I'll have a hand in every position that we do. I know uh, I know what our defense needs from a personnel standpoint. From a defensive tackle all the way to a corner. Um, and so I know what we need, I know what we're looking for, and I know what we have to accomplish 
in this league, especially after being in it for a year, um, you know, my understanding and expertise for this league and what we need in this defense, um, I feel like I got a pretty good handle on that. When you went into Eastern Illinois and South Abbey, obviously new personnel, new system, you had to learn everybody here. You've been here for a year. They've been playing this system. It's not that easy, but how much, I guess, smoother, maybe flattens the learning curve a little bit that you know the guys, they know the system, and yeah. it's, it's, you don't have to kind of introduce yourself to everybody in a new system. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a really different dynamic from the two places that I took over as coordinator before. Both those programs had struggled a little bit um, on, on their sides of the ball, respectively. And, and um, you know, I went into a position where nobody knew the system. I didn't bring anybody with me. You know, you're coming into a very different uh, scenario with this where uh, our coaching staff has been involved in the system for a number of years. Our players have uh, are going into year four, you know, the ones that have been here uh, in running this system. And so, uh, you know, m my dad, who, who we both learned the system from, will tell you the system evolves year to year based off of the personnel and what you need in the, in the league that you're in. And we'll always evolve and, and, and do some things. We're never going to do uh, everything the same of the 2016 defense and the 2018 defense. The 2019 different defense will do some different things. But at the same time, just our, our – uh, comfort level and knowing exactly what I have to get accomplished uh, over the next eight months until we start uh, the new season, there's definitely an easier learning curve uh, from that regard. Talking about what uh, what him and I the differences or just what we think. Well, I mean, about what you think just, just the way the scheme has evolved. Yeah. Season. Well, I, I think um, you know, and, and it's really the the scheme has evolved so many different facets over you know a, a 38 year career that my dad had, and really I'd say probably the last 20 years were, were what he was doing, and and some things that we we kind of took. Uh, you, know, you didn't have to deal with, uh, even up a, a couple years ago, you didn't have to deal with some of what, what I call the vertical RPO game, which is, you know, those run pass options that they're now, it used to be just throw a bubble screen out to the left or the right in the sideline, everybody go chase the ball and get them down. Right now, teams are starting to, to stretch you vertically down the field and still have the ability to run the football, and you got to make a split-second decision. And so some of the things that we've had to adapt our defense in that regard um, has has changed, and then the next week, you know, you go play a team like Michigan State that gets in 22 personnel. So it has to be a very versatile system in this league, uh, but you also have to be able to uh, play the the length of the field and the width of the field, uh, both vertically and horizontally. And then you also got to be able to get in there and play some big boy football. So uh, that is certainly something this uh, league challenges you. I do, I do. Uh, I, I think we've got uh, a tremendous group of young, talented players. Um, I think we've got some older guys that um, have built up experience in this defense that are excited about kind of their juniors and senior years. But, um, you know, I don't think uh, it's uh, – uh, I think we're all on the same page that we've recruited really well the last couple of years. Um, and the personnel that we have, this young talent that's coming in, you know, we, we took some licks with some of those guys, you know, this year, but they gained – phenomenal experience and some played at a very high level. So for us, um, I think that we've got a really good group. I think, um, you know, you're losing a couple guys on the interior defensive line. Um, I think that we've worked hard to kind of address some of those issues from a recruiting standpoint. I think we've done that. You know, time will tell obviously how those guys pan out and they got to develop and they got to do their job. But, you know, the, the work that Mark Hagan does, I have total confidence in what he does. I'm, I've worked in the defensive line. I've coached the defensive line in this system. Um, it's something that, that uh, I care d deeply about, and it really all starts up front from that standpoint. But I think uh, making sure that our defensive line up front, uh, especially on the interior, will be probably the biggest focus uh, that, uh, that we need to address. Yeah. That was kind of my question, but obviously you mentioned playing a lot of young guys. You only seem to get better from game one, game two. Mm -hmm. Your belief that guys really improve from year one, year two, when they play as much as they have. And obviously at safety, your position linebacker, you play a lot of first year guys. Yeah. I mean, how excited are you to get those guys in year two and see how much growth yeah. they've made? No, it, it, there will be a tremendous improvement with some of these guys um, going from year one to year two. It just, 
you know, and that's experience talking and just seeing these guys and the way they adjust. We're able to play young players because we keep the defense simple enough for young people to come in, learn it, and go execute at a high level. Uh, so for them to even come in and, and be able to play and execute, I think our defense allows that. Uh, but then when they get that experience, uh, you know, they give it into year two and they go, oh, I've seen this or I've, I know this or I, I anticipate this a little bit better. Uh, is is really a major deal for us uh, in in terms of that that year one to year two transition. When we first got here, Leal yeah, was not very good defensively. Obviously, he changed that culture. And right. Did a job for his staff. I mean, what do you do to get your staff on this defense? Right? No, I think that's a really good question. Um, you know, I'm I'm a culture guy um, and I'm a fundamentals guy. So. What I want to do is there, there's a – at times when you have some younger guys out there on the field, I thought Coach led us really well with a young group of guys um, to be able to just go out and execute and do their jobs. But at times I think uh, there were times on the field where we went and we executed and did our job, but there was a, a certain swagger that you have to play with in this league that you saw in 2016 and 17 that probably with some younger players we didn't get to see as much of in 2018. And I think – Coach knew that, he recognized that and anticipated and we adjusted our defense accordingly. Uh, but I think the thing that, uh, that I really uh, look forward to building is a, a, a swagger uh, and a confidence in our group that when we walk on that field, uh, we're, we're, we're 11 bad jokers um, that are ready to, uh, to inflict our will uh, onto our opponents. So that's something that I think uh, is really exciting about this group of players um, because they're, they're a pretty hungry group. Uh, and some of them got a nasty edge about themselves that uh, that allows you to create a culture uh, that that guys want to be a part of. You know. All right, thanks, Wayne. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Guys, we're gonna get a picture with Cam.